Eats rich. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And before we get started, we wanted to shout out to Cards We Release, our sponsor, somewhere under these lights. Thank you. Ooh, there it is. I've been waiting to see that bad boy. My God, that looks good. See, it says, it says Snodgrass. Matthew Rice, it says Snodgrass. Oh, no, no, yeah. What, what did he expect you that. to say? Uh, we'll talk about that after the cast. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Can't wait. Uh, <laughs> Oh wait, I, can, I think I can already. I think I already get where you're going with that. Ouch. Um, yeah, yeah that's rough. great. Anyway, thank Feeling, you. Uh, fe- feelings <laughs> were hurt, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, James uh, Lockwood, for for your sponsorship. Um, and we cannot wait for the reunion event, which you're you're hosting here um, next month. Um, but before we get started, we want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, uh, whatever it is that you celebrate. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're really excited to move into this next year, um, of Final Fantasy. This will be basically season three. Is that, that's correct, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Basically yeah, like, season three. If, if they had yeah, season, we'll, if they had season passes, uh, for Final Fantasy, <laughs> we're moving into season three, which is awesome. So Merry Christmas to, uh, everyone out there. Um, uh, first let's get started with the reunion event. The reunion event is coming up on January 12th. Um, I'm getting more and more excited for it. I was excited for it before it was announced as a petite cup. Um, petite cups are really cool. Sorry, these, these things are actually burning my neck. <laughs> um, <laughs> petite cups are really cool. Um, they're they're pretty casual, I would say, but they don't feel casual. Have you have you you played in uh, the Kansas one? I remember you played in the Kansas one. Have you played in the other ones besides Kansas? No, just Kansas, but it's still competitive. But, your your mic broke up a little bit, but you said something about it being competitive. Oh. No, yeah, I think I think it was pretty competitive. That was the only one I played in was. That's Kansas. what I feel like too, and maybe it's a regional thing. So in Tampa, uh, we felt like the Tampa one was very competitive, and Kansas also felt very competitive. Um, so yeah, it, it's interesting that they are they are tailored towards the more casual group of players showing up. But that's just realistically, we're almost always going to show up. Um, the the competitive players are going to show up to these things. So it's, it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of things planned. I think we're going out to dinner the Friday night before. Um, there's 12 of us staying in a... Oh wait, no. I think it's 15. 15 of us staying in a house, an Airbnb. So it's, yeah, it's <laughs> going to be pretty insane. Um, super stoked about that. Uh, so if you haven't got your tickets, I think there's literally like 9 or 10 spots left, depending on if some of the European people that were coming are going or not. Um but yeah, that, that's super exciting. And then and next up right after that, and I mean right after that, around the corner <laughs> is Fan Fest. For those of us that were lucky enough to get tickets, uh, eight minutes, 125 tickets sold out. Um, I didn't even have enough time to put my wife's uh, information in before it sold out. Um, so I did one of us and then went to go do the other one and didn't have time. Cody, you got off work and uh, tell us a little about that experience. Got off work, check Facebook. It was already sold out, and I was like, I was pretty salty, I'm not going to lie, but it happens. I'll see you guys at Gen Con at least, and I'll be at the Petite Cup Championship in Kansas. So so you're yeah. so you're going to be at the Petite Cup Championship? Yeah, and like the LQ before it. Man. They have the, last, the last Petite Cup will be right before that. So, so. so one of two things has just happened. Either Cody doesn't understand how these are working, or he just assumes that he's going to win or top four the Petite Cup in Kansas. Oh, so for you, sure. ha- you have to top four the Petite Cup in Kansas in order to be invited to the championship. That's uh, right. And also, that championship basically is the first LQ. Is that correct? Yep. Which is really interesting. Um uh, how do I say this delicately? <laughs> um, it, it feels like it's a cross between what we want and what 
they they don't want if that makes sense what square Enix doesn't want and what we want so to give an example is is if you wanted it to be a if you wanted the petite cups to be very casual um then giving invites to nationals even for the finals seems a little bit strange but i'm not complaining i'm glad that there's invites but then giving only one invite really discourages traveling all the way to kansas for most of us um, no, absolutely so if I earn an invite in Tampa or someone earns an invite at their Petite Cup in, in Canada or in California, they don't have the same – it's just not the same EV as you do if you if you earn it in Kansas, if that makes sense. Um, right. Yeah, like it's a drive for me. So like obviously I'm going to go and participate in – I mean if I have top four, then I can participate in the championship. But I can't see like people that win in – I don't know where all the Petite Cups are, but like – I think there's one in Oregon, so like I don't, I can't see somebody flying out that far, just for the championship. Right. Like, if I earned my invite in Kansas and the championship was in Florida, even I probably wouldn't go, just because it's only one invite. Like, right. Which is one of the problems that I I don't really understand. I guess why it's not like top four get invites to nationals. We're not talking about world invites. We're talking about national invites. Um, and even at a national level, like nationals is really cool. But Nationals almost to me also seems a little bit more casual. Um, it's when you top eight or top four or whatever it is, Nationals that you get the world's invite where it starts to get really competitive. Nationals is kind of just like a, I don't know, maybe this is the magic in me carrying over that like Nationals is more of a pride thing and everyone should be able to compete in it. Uh, but if you had to earn an invite, I think that's fine. But why, why is it such a strict invite process? Does that make sense? No, like, yeah, absolutely. Why can't our uh, petite cups get Nats invites? Uh, if this, if if the Crystal Cups give world invites, oh no, they give they give Nats, they give world invites, right? Now they do, yeah. Okay, so it's just a way, way, way better system. I feel like national invites for petite cups um, would drive the 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 sales and the tickets of petite cups up, while still. The prizes are really cool and kind of casual and would also keep the casual crowd interested. Um, not to mention, I mean, not to sound what we're going to call Josh Goodish, but <laughs> most of the Nationals felt pretty casual, right? Like the players you play against feel pretty casual. There are very good players and very good grinders at Nationals. But to me, it felt like a lot of casual people also showed up and did well and played in the event. Uh, yeah, I feel like there was some... There was definitely a lot of competitive, like very good players. Like when I dropped when I dropped my first game to Alejandro, I was like scared to death when I saw Danny Diaz's name on the list against me. I was like, "Oh great!" But uh, I don't know. It's it was still pretty competitive. I think that's but, fair. I well, I guess what I I'm think, saying is that like people, I I think we we forced as a community to take it a little more seriously than maybe we should have. It just seems like at the end of the day, it was just a lot of fun and. Uh, no, yeah, it was a complete blast. Like, I could just but, see it, like, not being that competitive. I, I just don't think that it's... I don't think it's at the level where we... Where, like, Petite Cups giving invites to it is too much to ask. Um, no, no. But maybe yeah, that's for next year. I don't maybe... Know. I could also see... I know they're doing the two Worlds invites at Gen Con. I would be fine if they put one of the Worlds invites on the Petite Cup finals. Obviously, that's not going to happen this year, but... See, and, and I would hate that. Honestly, I would hate that only because they have to make a decision whether they want it to be competitive or not competitive, and that mm. forces it to be competitive, which I am which I would be fine with. The only reason I would hate it is because like, if they keep saying it's not competitive but then give it a world's invite, it's just, almost, it's just worse than what they're doing right now, um, which is saying that it's casual and then saying, well, if you show up for these finals, you could get your nationals invite, but the finals sure. are in Kansas – and you have to play against all the other Petite Cup champions. So it's all the best players. Um, so you're already playing at the national level, quite literally, right? Uh, you're playing at the oh, yeah. national level. And then, like, the people who win Petite Cups are good enough to compete at Nationals, period. I, I don't think there's any argument for that. Like, if you win a Petite right. Cup, you're probably good enough to compete for Nationals. Um, but you don't... You now you have to fly across the country, and it's not even like top two. Top two, I think, is almost the bottom the bottom line of where I would call it like fair. 
to travel for. Top four would be what I would think would be the goal, and top eight is ridiculous. Then then everyone's going to fly. Yeah. But maybe that's a good thing to have all the guys that made the top four are... Because you have to top four to make it to the championship, correct? You have the top What's four up, boys and girls? Mr. Cool here. Turns out the audio was just in. Yeah, I feel like if they had, if they had top eight the get nationals in uh, play, basically, Josh was saying something about something and are fly something else. Right. Yeah, I, I don't so know. So I don't think He's it's a bad thing anyway. because it could be a, a bad scene. Play like, this rift and I'll have you right back with Like a bad moment if we get to the Petit Cup finals and it's like two people and then the four guys that top the LQ. And just like a six, like a six man tournament, like. And it does feel like it could be that, right? No, absolutely. The, the, I, I wouldn't be surprised if like, I go to Kansas, whether I top four or not, and day two is just the four Kansas guys and no one else shows up. Yeah, I, like I, 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 I agree. I, I, I would put the under on 12 people showing up. I think that I put the over on four, but <laughs> the under on 12. But I don't know. Well, I mean, we, who knows? We have what? We have six petite cups before that one, right? How many, put, yeah, how many petite cups do you have within Kansas driving distance? Is it just Kansas City? That's the only one I'm planning on going to. Um, I, I asked because if you had two, then I could see the over being on eight would be a fair guess. In other words, yeah. yes, I think the, the everyone who top fours Kansas will show up. No, um, absolutely. But like Kansas is like a two, three hour drive for me, so that's easy. Right. I don't know where all the crystal cups. I know there's Oregon and Florida, so those are obviously out of the question. Yeah, that's fair. But, yeah. Um, so let, let's talk about, you brought up a little bit, but, uh, Gen Con, Gen Con was announced to have two worlds invites. We don't know the format. Do you think that's, uh, well, what are your thoughts on that period? Uh, I mean, obviously I'd like to know the format and I'd like to know when tickets go on sale, preferably in advance. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it could be title. I think it could be sealed. It could be. I hope it's. I, I like the idea of like a team format type thing, but I also don't like the idea. Obviously, if it's a world invite, it's one person. So, well, if you get two invites, yeah, but I I can't I can't see like a doubles tournament. But they sh I think they should. Like I'm not even I I think that would be awesome to have like a two deck format, uh, where the with the two winners go to worlds. Imagine imagine being able to go to a tournament cody where you and your friend that's very good at final fantasy preferably you take someone that's good uh get to qualify play in the tournament together and qualify together for worlds there's a huge draw uh in my opinion for that i would be much more willing to travel to gen con if i got to arrange with a friend to go um and we could grind and, and battle and test together uh it just puts a whole lot more... I mean, for example, to test for a tournament like that is much easier than testing for on a team of like six people or a team of 12 people or by yourself. The opposite. Like two people arranging time together just seems like it could be a lot better. But I, I know it's not going to happen. So I'm not living in a in a fantasy world where I think that there's going to be a two-man tournament where both qualify for worlds. But I can't yeah, think of a better format. Um, that's fair enough. I think... I would like to see, I guess, if I had to choose, I would say one constructed event, mm -hmm. and then the other one maybe do sealed again. I do mean, it went over pretty well last year, so. Right. Do you think that sealed... Hmm. I just, I guess, I, I'm not a fan of sealed. Um, no, me neither. Me I neither. think that it, it... I think that building a sealed deck is not easy. I'm not claiming that there's no skill involved. It's certainly a hard thing to do to build a good sealed deck. Um, you got to watch your curve. Um, but most importantly, you need to be able to open a decent sealed pool. Right. And I think that like that takes a lot of the skill out. Um, and magic, perhaps it's a little bit different. You're opening more packs. Um, I don't know. It just seems different. I also would like to see, obviously, since I didn't make top eight of the sealed crystal cup last year, I'd like to see it cut to top 16 because I mean, every other crystal cup did. Right. Uh, well, I don't know what they're calling the Gen Con World Invite. Right. It won't, we know it won't be a Crystal Cup. Right. It, yeah, it won't be a Crystal Cup, and there's no... You know, is there a Dark Cup as well this year? I don't remember if they announced it or not. Like, basically the last chance, like we had the year before. I, would, I, I imagine, right? I, yeah, I imagine so. Um, just because I would fly out to that, even if I don't have my invite by then, I would definitely fly out for that. 
Right. Right. That that's that's fair. Um yeah, I don't know. I'm I I'm not a fan of the Gen Con thing. I don't I don't think such high invites should be placed at such an expensive event. And Gen Con can be quite expensive. Like you said earlier when I was talking to you, it's a drive for you. But it's still expensive. It's still a high barrier entry. Hotels for Gen Con are very expensive. Um, months yeah, and months and months out in advance. Um, every hotel knows the Jacob's prices. I heard her- terrible stories about Airbnbs canceling when they realized that like there's a big event coming in and overcharging. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's exciting, and I guess the way to look at it in the positive light is that it's t- two extra invites for us for Worlds. Right. So we're not losing anything. We had eight last year, right? We have 12 this year. So we get two extra here. Um, where are other two coming from? Is it just because the Crystal Cups? We have two yeah, less at Worlds, right? Or no, four less at Worlds? Four less at Worlds. Okay. So that's four, and then you got six Crystal six Cups. Six Crystal Cups. And two at Gen Con. Okay, so then the Dark Cup is also not giving a, uh, a Worlds. I, I, I think they did say there would be a Dark Cup, but it won't be... It'll have the same pricing as a Crystal Cup, but I don't think it'll have the... The World uh, Invite. Correct. Right, okay. Instead, it'll be like top four getting to Nationals. Kind of like last year where it didn't give the buys. It was just the top four. You still get your trophy and your prizing. Okay, right. I you know I didn't even realize that the Sephiroth Cup didn't give uh, buys. Yeah. That's interesting. No um, But Callie did get a Crystal Cup, right? I'm trying to think. They yeah. did. Okay, I, I just was just trying to see if it was at least spread out fairly. Which, like, if, if which, they didn't get a Crystal Cup, then it would be um, worse. Obviously. Which I imagine they'll get another Crystal Cup, especially because they're saying that they're going to do them at card shops, and I think Card Game Coliseum does enough for the community. Sure, yeah. Definitely earn one, and they have the size, obviously, to hold all the people. Yeah. Yeah, I can but. see that. Um, so, you know, you actually just brought up a good point. Um there, there was some backlash about this um, this award ceremony thing that uh, we came up with. <laughs> what was your thought on all that? You know, we didn't even plan on talking about that, but that's probably good, good, good to bring up. That's that's happening in two days, right? No, the twenty. I can't do math. That's happening in four days, the 29th. Yeah, today is actually Christmas Day when we're recording this. <laughs> yeah, today is Christmas Day. I'm gonna try and get up on Christmas Day as well. Um, okay. Um, but yeah. I, I think people are open. I, I can understand the opinions on both sides. So I mean, it just it was just a a rough draft this year. It's kind of like like we're we have different opinions about the petite cups and the crystal cups and the world invites. Like we're gonna have different opinions. It's just gonna get better and better. Right. Yeah, that's fair. And it was think, a think, last minute thing, right? I mean, that's that's where it really oh, yeah. ties into. Um, yeah, and I mean, I I wasn't. I didn't even get to really try to. I tried to be involved, but I was obviously working. Right. While a lot of the conversations were going on, things moved um, very quickly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Things moved very quickly. Um, yeah. Um, but no, I think it, I think it should go fine. I think the constructive criticism is good. So I agree with that. Uh, so if you don't know, I believe the time is actually moved to six to eight. If does that sound familiar? Um, again, things move so quickly that it's hard to tell. That's Eastern time. Um, that will be on Jordan Dank's stream. Um, I'm sure Tantalus will post it very soon. Um, this was their brilliant idea. Um, I think it's absolutely just genius. I think it's a lot of fun. I think next year we'll do better. Um, but you got you guys, I think everyone should check it out. It's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot, a lot of fun things going on with it. Um, nah, it should be a blast. So let's talk about the unfun things. Um, Uh-oh. what I think is unfun and that is what is, is to me, I, and I haven't looked at top lists in a couple of days, but to me, what was unfun about it was the earth wind deck doing so damn well. Have you experienced oh, that yeah. there at all in your locals or, uh, no, not yet. Um, with Christmas coming up, I haven't been able to make as many locals. Um, but I plan to get back to like two to three a week. Um, but I do know that it is. Very good. I have it built, so <laughs> I haven't brought it yet. So right, but when when Cody shelves some water cards and pulls out some earth cards, something is un unbalanced in the force. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it's very good. I don't think it's like 
I don't, I don't, I don't want to call it like overpowered or like. That's I fair. don't want to see anybody going like banned out of Luma or anything like that, but like it's just a very good deck. Right. Cards mesh well together. And... Now, recently, it looks like Nick uh, Nick Chanel won the Zodiac Trials with it. Um, if I'm looking at if I'm looking at the top list, right? If I, if I go to FF decks, so the most recent tournament, some of these are small, like the Xmas tournament. Uh, the Xmas special tournament only had ten players, but it won that. Um, if you look, let's see. So the Xmas tourney, the Zodiac Trials had sixteen players. It also won that. Didn't Steven Arboleda win? The he did. Uh, Soldier series, I think, is what it was. Yes, I'm trying. I'm trying to get down to that. Um, I don't say. I'm, I'm just going off the top of my head. I don't have it pulled up in front of me. Yeah, he did. Uh, Soldier series number four. That's what it was. Uh, mm -hmm. He won that with it. Um, the Meta Potion Store Championship was won with it. Um, and that one, let's see, Steven's event had 16 players, which is, I think, a, a pretty good amount and a pretty good... The Meta Potion Championship had 21 players. Um, it, it, it does seem like it's doing very, very good. Like, I don't know about oppressingly good, but Dataluma Cactar is a, a, a not very no. fun deck to play against. Now, I have a question... Now we know that, at least my understanding is that Mono Wind beats up on this deck quite easily, um, but I also heard that Wind Water did well against it. Uh, have you seen that matchup at all, or, or have you not experienced it? Um, from when Turbo was legal, which really doesn't make much of a difference. Wind, I was able to beat it with Wind Water, um, but I'm also a big fan of Minwoo, and a lot of people don't play Minwoo. So, okay, and that's a good point because if we look. I think at but I think if you're playing Wind Water right now, I think Minwoo's definitely needs to be like on your high priority list. Right, it's pretty good in the mirror because a lot of times what they're trying to do is they'll cast a Valfor when you're tapped out, which will untap everything, and then they can Diabolus um, or cast their Barbarisha. Uh, but if you have Minwoo, that really just puts a foil to their plan. Um, but you know, if if you look at this, uh, the YRP. Um, Yuri Chalinka deck list from Meta Potion. It actually lost to Earth Wind in the finals. Now that's a small sample size. It's best two of three, and I wasn't there, um, so it, it's hard for me to get feedback. But much to what you were saying, it's also not running uh, Menwu, um, and I can see that being a problem. Which I mean, and obviously, like you and Jordan are big fans of, like, the Sid 2 and Fusoya package, so, like, in those decks, you don't have room for Minwu. Like, you hardly have room to even play an Evoker down, like, right. let alone play... Right, yeah, like if, you, if, if you play one Evoker, there's something else that you're yeah. not playing that's coming down. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. This A and lot I mean, of people are choosing between Layla Viking or Porum. This deck, interestingly enough, ran both. Um, maybe yeah, just... I don't, I don't, I've been seeing some talk about that where they're like taking like Layla and Viking out for Poem. I don't know if I agree with that entirely. Um, just because I think it weakens the power of Cloud of Darkness. Quite a, quite a bit, actually, right? Um, yeah, well, I mean, because you, you can drop Pain, Layla, Viking, Cloud, and like all of a sudden you have four forwards in one turn. Right, and, and those decks weren't playing Fasoya, uh, although Layla, Viking does seem a lot better in Fasoya decks, um, just as a way to trade up. But I do like Porum quite a bit right now. Porum, uh, most notably, being able to stop Yuri activations, um, yeah. Estola activations, and maybe what the, maybe the two most important activations I think you can stop is Fasoya and Riku. Um, so I can see that being kind of important. Um, Riku is interesting as it as we it seems to me that we've entered sort of a Fasoya meta game, and even some of the Earth Wind decks are coming back to that Riku as a way to stop their their ability to to manipulate the top of their deck, um, mm -hmm. which is fairly 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 an interesting call. Um, what You're talking about adding the Mill Riku back into Earthwind? Right. Yeah. It, I it, think it's it, it's tough to fit it in though because I mean it is. But we, the list I've seen has recently so had backups. <laughs> yeah, and you remember that used to be a water problem. Um, but if we look at the Zodiac Trials, let's see the JFB special deck. Um, Fit in two of the two of the Riku H's, um, one Archer. It does play eighteen backups. I'm trying to see where it cut. It cut a minor from the the standard list. 
I don't know. Miner does seem like one of the best Earth backups. Um, the was, research... that two, was that two Simi Lafina in that deck? No, three. They're not three, crazy. Okay. Well, I, uh, I've been seeing the... I don't like the two Simi, yeah, that's one just, Hugh, Hugh Yerg. That, that's just nuts. If you want Hugh, that's fine, but keep Simi, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I I can't understand when people cut that to two, but uh, go the, on. It's oh, interesting okay. that the FCC that the FCC has a character ser uh, uh, a searcher now for four, so you can actually get Hugh off of it. You can get the monster, uh, the one that destroys monsters. I forget what it is. Um, the mm -hmm. Na Nash, I think it is. Um, which is interesting. The re the resurgence of Tama and these Earth decks is really interesting to me, and my guess is that it has a lot to do with Noctis. Um, Tama and Noctis can actually just be game breaking. Uh, You're talking about like Opus One Tama two drop. Yeah, yeah, it's seen a huge okay. resurgence. It's been playing a lot. I haven't seen an Earth Wind deck without it in a while. Um, because if you're on, was if you're on five damage, no, if you're on four damage, and then you Tama and Noctis when you're about to take damage, and then you take the damage to go to five. It still targets for its first ability. And then you can like Cactar something to 10k it. Then you take a damage. Then it then it also triggers both of its abilities. So you're killing one, two, three, plus if the fight kills something, four guys. Is that right? Holy crap. With one Noctis. I'll say I can't do all that math in my head, but it sounds about right. Noctis right. can do some pretty ridiculous things, so right, which is a, a lot of the reasons why we're seeing it with Phoenix right now as well. Um, Phoenix, Phoenix, and then right then is also pretty popular. Um, yeah, it, this deck does seem really good. What do you think? If you had to show up, let's say you had an event tomorrow. I know, I know you haven't, you know, you've been doing some Christmas stuff, so you haven't played a lot. Would you play Earth Wind or would you play Water Wind? And is it sad that I'm asking you this question? Shouldn't this be an obvious answer for you? No, it's it's definitely wind water for sure. Okay. Um, just because I'm more comfortable on that deck, but I think it definitely speaks volumes that I've never even heard of Nick Nicholas Schnell playing wind water or earth wind. Right. Before, like I've known him to play lightning and fire and like, not that not to like knock him as a player or anything, but like, it seemed like I'm like, not like an if, earth, there's an I, obvious, I've never, if there's an obvious like, best deck and he jumps on it, there's a reason for it, right? Yeah, and not saying that he's just jumping on it just because it's the best deck, but like. I don't know. Like, it if you see sense. me top with an Earth Wind list, it's not because like I chose to play that. I cho I'm playing that because it's the best deck. Like, which is how I felt in Kansas. That's that's another good point. Like, people know that I love water. Like, I just I play Modern Water when I get a chance. Most of the events that I run locally here, I I will play some sort of variant of Modern Water. Um, but I've known I've been known to play a lot of Earth Water as well. But in that the Crystal Cup, I just played Earth Wind. It was just the best deck. Why would I yeah. play anything else? Uh, this deck, in comparison, is now granted we're two opuses later, but this deck is way, way better, right? Like this is, oh yeah, like yeah, I mean, Ga well, Galdez, then, for example, is just insane. Noctis is just insane. Yeah, and back then, did we even have Mog Eleven yet? I don't think we did. No, no, no. no. Mog Eleven came during Opus Six. Um, yeah, and it was. I, I think Earthwind was still the best deck back then in Opus right, Five. Right. Yeah. Like, but I had no idea. Like, I guess I hadn't. I wasn't as competitive back then yeah. until that, I guess that night before when I won. The, the night before when, yeah, yeah. I was we, like, all right, I'm, I'm okay at this game. You guys <laughs> show up, play, play in a uh, LQ undefeated the LQ, right? Yeah. I dropped one. I dropped a game to Alex in the two out of three, but okay. And then just, just, uh, exo the Swiss of the crystal cup. And you're like, you know what? Maybe I'll just start playing this game. Uh, yeah, but I was dodging. I was safely dodging Earthwind that whole, the whole Swiss rounds. That's fair. And Earthwind really wasn't know. that popular. No, I, take, I take that back. I did play Jake Lee in round one. Oh yeah, he, yeah. he kind of had a brick hand, unfortunately. So he was, I, was he, like, I think he was on my exact deck list. Is that correct? Right, right. Yeah. And yeah. and Zach Zach was sitting next to me, but we didn't know each other really at the time. Like obviously, I wasn't in the Choke Bros or anything like that. So right, you hadn't dream crushed yet. And and he played Aaron Wiseman. Who made it to the finals with Earthwind also? So yeah, I was just like looking all around. I'm like, oh man, I gotta. I, <laughs> I need to reevaluate that. life here. <laughs> yeah. But you know, here we are, later on, and you no longer have to worry about the power of Thaumaturge. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, but I think that helped me beat Earthwind. Yeah, yeah. Times. I just meant the literal power. You know, one thousand yeah. party attack. Oh, oh. 
Rip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what have you thought about the Opus Seven meta? Um, I know there's some complaints that it's just Opus. It, does it feel like Opus Six Plus to you, or Opus Six Two Point Oh? I don't know. There's no turbo, so I wouldn't say that at all. That's gone. It's kind of like. So is we... it Opus Five Three Point Oh then? Maybe yeah, that's it. Opus five three. Because like you've seen the resurgence of these big ice decks. Um, like I'm surprised actually you're uh, you you would consider Earth or Wind Water when you have a card like Sephiroth. Like I don't know, man. Sephiroth gives me chills. How good it is. Um, yeah, I think he's very good. Like it. I don't know. I, I ice is obviously my second, or they're probably tied for my two favorite decks: is Wind Water and Ice. Right. Um, but Ice, I don't think can beat Earth Wind. That's fair. Yeah, I, I haven't tested a lot. Obviously, I, it can beat it, but like... right, right. I built a really cool deck that had Seraphis, Minor Menphilia, and like you would just always Sephiroth special like over and over, and it was oh, awesome. Nice. And then you you could do the same thing with like Ultimisia. So basically, you would take some early damage, and then you would just Ultimisia and just lock them down multiple times in a row. I was playing against Alfred, and there'd be like games where like I was at six damage and he had no damage, and then I Ultimisia renoa and sephiroth like the combination of them every turn until he just died um <laughs> out of nowhere like just like he's like oh i'm clearly winning this game and then i'm like okay untap ultimisia do or freeze your backups and your forwards and he'd untap play a backup pa pass i'd be like okay attack wall boost my guy attack then renoa bounce ultimisia freeze your stuff again and i would do, do this several times like several several turns in a row and uh, right. we went out of nowhere, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but Sephiroth has been a lot of fun for me. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. I don't know if you can play him in a world where, like, Mono Wind is just dropping backups, like, very quickly. Um, so is Earth Water. Um, or, w w sorry, Wind Water. Uh, have, you, so have you played a lot with the 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 Rob Rob's deck version, which is a lot of Mono Wind, or seen it? Or did you watch the finals at all? You're talking about with the Chalinka Yuri package? Yeah, it was like Mono Wind with um, Porums and Cloud of Darkness, basically. Yeah, no, I, I saw I saw the deck. I haven't played with it. I actually don't have enough. I ha think I only have one Chalinka right now, so. Oh, geez. Which is heartbreaking, so. Yeah, we got to fix that, man. I got two extra Chalinkas. Oh, man. But no, maybe I'll. I got some money for Christmas, so I'll slide on over to Cards of Beelies and see what I can. Hit up the DMs. <laughs> that was the shame. That was the shameless plug right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, but but no, I definitely got to get more Chalinkas. Uh, I've tested with it, just proxying it, obviously. Uh, but that was more mono wind. I haven't really tried the wind water. I feel like we're not missing anything. Uh, it's really like a, a a wound down time of the year right now. Um, mm -hmm. We have, I mean, like some exciting stuff coming around the corner with the reunion, then fan fest. Um, Followed by, let's see, February, March. Is Do the Crystal Cup start in April? Uh, I believe so. I'm trying to remember when they started last year. Oh, wait, you said Crystal Cups. I'm thinking of Petit Cups. Yeah. My bad. Um, I want to say April. Could be wrong. I want to say April May. as well. Um, so are you going to be traveling to Crystal Cups? Is that a priority for you? Or... Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I'll definitely be at... The first two events I will for sure be at is the KC LQ for the Petite Cup Grand Championship. You heard it here. He's already, he's already making the finals. As long as it doesn't sell out. Well, I don't know about the finals part, but I'll be there. The finals part can't sell out, right? No, I'm talking about the first part. The Petite Cup. Yeah. Do you think you have the scene there to sell a Petite Cup? I mean, I, not even not even California sold out their Petite Cup. Let's, let's hope not, because I want to <laughs> <Yeah>. play. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but no, I, I should be at that. And then as long as Gen Con doesn't sell out or do anything crazy. Gen Con will sell out. So it's whether or not you get there before they sell out. Well, it didn't sell out. Well, it, there weren't world invites last year, so. Yeah, no, I think it did sell out last year. Gen Con, the, the, the event itself sold out. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay, okay. So if, I'm you, talking can't, about, if you can't get it Gen I would, Con. I would just hate to buy Gen Con passes and then the Final Fantasy thing sells out like while I'm at work or something. But even then, that's still way better because Gen Con's amazing, right? Um, uh, yeah. Yes I mean, no. I mean, I'm I'm not a big like board game guy or any of that you. stuff. I, I'm not either. So but I, I, well, I do I enjoy went, some board games, but yeah, I, I went strictly for like Final Fantasy. But you had a good time either way. But I see you also had a good time because you're playing Final Fantasy. Yeah, that that was the the highlight of it all. 
And obviously hanging that's, out with like Cole and RB and all those guys and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's really fair. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited for the Crystal Cups. I think that right now I'm planning on attending two of them. Would be my guess. I'm going to attend the one in Tampa. If should they have one in Tampa. And I will Orlando or Miami, where it is, or I will attend the one in Kansas. We can assume that there's certainly going to be one in Kansas. It seems to be a fan favorite, um, which is awesome. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I guess think... that's that's the next time I'll see you is uh, actually the Petite Cup Kansas, right? Yeah. Are you going to that? That's it, that's the one Petite Cup I'm considered traveling for. The okay. one, but it, it has a lot to do with the fact that like I'm going to stay with Jake Lee, who's literally the nut. And, uh, I mean, honestly, I don't see traveling to any of the petite cups if I didn't have someone really cool to stay with. So yeah, no, that's fair enough. Yeah. That's a, that's probably the reason I will travel. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's about it for us, right? I think so. That's, All right. I, well, got, I got no script here. So well, <laughs> do you want to show off your, your sweatshirt real quick? Ooh. Stone Cold light up sweatshirt. This is for Rice and Chris Adams and Adam Lane and all the other wrestling fans. Yeah. In the, right. the FFTCG. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. I've been your host, Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. We'll see you guys later. Yeah.